epilepsy warning for flashing lights and colors. Just like roller coasters, dark rides have been a staple of amusement and theme parks for quite some time. But out of the many dark rides out there, which ones are just plain bad? From the so bad it's good to the so bad it's terrible, here are the top 10 worst dark rides as voted on by the viewers. Number 10, Nile River Tour at Las Vegas, Nevada's Luxor Hotel. For quite some time, Las Vegas has been known for its unique variety of attractions. And of course, what would Vegas be without hotels and casinos? From Caesars Palace to Excalibur, each hotel has a unique theme and design. And that's certainly no different for the Luxor. This hotel is literally a giant pyramid, and the interior experience is themed to ancient Egypt. Originally opening in 1993, this hotel once had much more pronounced theming. Among its opening day attractions was a boat ride known as the Nile River Tour. While it was mostly meant to transport guests around the inside of the pyramid, early promotional videos promoted it as entertainment rather than just transportation. And there were some dark portions of the ride as well. Some may not consider it a dark ride, but let's be honest, when else am I going to get to talk about this? This slow-moving boat ride took guests around the inside of the hotel, allowing them to view mock Egyptian murals, mock Egyptian sculptures, more mock Egyptian murals, and even more mock Egyptian murals. And that was pretty much it. Sure, some of the murals had a black light effect on them, but the ride's entertainment factor was still extremely low. And although each boat had a tour guide who would give the history behind each mural, this didn't make the ride any more exciting. Imagine the Jungle Cruise, but instead of animatronic animals, the skippers had to talk about a bunch of walls 90% of the time. Inspiration Falls, more like Inspiration Walls. Ooh ah. Now I'm sure this ride has its fans, especially the ones who grew up taking family trips to Vegas. But as a dark ride, this is just lame. Even as a transportation system it was said to be ineffective, as the lines for it were said to be so long that it was actually quicker to walk to your destination. Some may have fond memories of it, but it wasn't worth writing home about. Number 9. Earthquake the Ride in Gatlinburg, Tennessee What happens when you take Universal Studios' defunct Earthquake ride and give it 10% of the budget? You get this odd dark ride. Located across the street from Fanny Farkle's Family Fun Parlor is a dark ride that really makes you think. And by that, I mean it makes you think about what kind of brownies the designers were eating. While Universal's version took place in a subway station, Gatlinburg's version takes place in a subway station in a fever dream. Let's do a quick analysis. On the left, we have some random guy laying on a bench next to a bunch of lockers. While on the right, we have a random gorilla inside a wooden crate. The effects on this ride are incredibly cheesy, and it really qualifies it as a so bad it's good ride. You've got effects where the roof caves in and the walls leak, but things get even crazier than that. You've got alligators popping out of sewer pipes, rats running down the walls, rats coming down from the ceiling, and even random spiders, as if earthquakes just weren't spooky enough to make an attraction out of. There's even a part of the ride where the gorilla breaks out of the crate and tries to slap the passengers. And at the end of the ride, the gorilla jump scares passengers from the roof. They could have just called this ride, Boo, Haunted Earthquake. There's no doubt this ride's hokey nature and lack of cohesion made it widely disliked by the public. And it's currently among the worst rated Gatlinburg attractions on TripAdvisor. Still though, I gotta say that there's a certain charm to these small time dark rides. And for a dark ride clearly made on a tight budget, the effects aren't too shabby. If you're ever in the Gatlinburg area, feel free to check this ride out. Number 8. Jurassic Jungle Boat Ride in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee What happens when you take Universal's Jurassic Park River Adventure and give it 10% of the budget? You get this attraction on 2806 Parkway. I've talked about this ride before in my Submechanophobia video, but the ride as a whole is really worth going into. For animatronics fans, you're in luck, because this ride has plenty of them, more than most dark rides out there. Unfortunately, some of them are in pretty bad condition, with one raptor missing an arm and a T-Rex having a dislocated jaw that makes it really hard for me to avoid a bite of 87 joke. Some of the animatronics are no longer functional, and some of them are just plain horrifying. Quality-wise, it certainly doesn't hold a candle to the ride it's based on, but in all honesty, it's pretty hard not to recommend this attraction. If you're looking for something that gives a chilling, skin-crawling atmosphere, you should really check this ride out. Just look at this pterosaur, this enormous snake, these submerged tentacles, and this… 
thing. So if you feel like giving your kids nightmares, I once again recommend this ride. Number 7. Journey into your imagination at Florida's Epcot While the original Journey into Imagination is considered one of the best dark rides of all time, its successor is considered to be among the worst. First opening in 1983, the original Journey into Imagination took guests on exactly what the name implied. Hosted by the Dreamfinder and his lovable dragon Figment, the ride took guests through a variety of creative and colorful set pieces. To this day, Disney Park fans marvel at how advanced and engaging the ride was for its time. However, in the late 90s, Disney executives wanted to update Epcot's attractions, as the park's view of the future from the early 80s had become dated. Though it can easily be argued that Journey into Imagination was timeless as it was, Disney wanted the ride sponsor Kodak to give it an update. Unfortunately, the photography company had been struggling financially, so the budget they had to work with was extremely small. The resulting attraction would go down in history as one of the worst things Disney was ever involved with, Cars 2 included. This new version of the ride would replace the warm-hearted Dreamfinder with veteran actor Eric Idle. But this wasn't Monty Python level Eric Idle, it was Shrek 3 level Eric Idle. Idle would scan guests at the beginning and tell them up front they have no imagination. After being flat out insulted, passengers make their way through an array of illusions that are more fitting of a Ripley's Believe It or Not museum than Disney World. And the fan favorite Figment? Well, he barely appeared on this ride. Even though he had been a beloved mascot for many years, the best they could do is have him appear in Q-Line videos and as a constellation. whoop de doo And as if that weren't bad enough, the ride's original theme song, One Little Spark, was nowhere to be heard. Terrible changes aside, the ride itself felt soulless and dull, and the reception to it was so bad that it closed in less than three years. The ride would soon be replaced with Journey into Imagination with Figment. While the new ride was superior, it still didn't hold a candle to the original, and Figment is portrayed more like an Adam Sandler character than his original childlike persona. I remember riding the original in 1998, and then coming back in 2003 and being pissed off. And I'm sure many others felt the same. Number 6. Garfield's Nightmare at Pennsylvania's Kennywood Once upon a time, there was a beloved dark ride named The Old Mill. First built in 1901, this spooky, skeleton-filled water ride was loved by generations of park guests. But in 2004, the ride experience would be drastically changed, as a familiar, meme-worthy feline entered the fray. That year, the old mill was entirely gutted and replaced with Garfield's Nightmare. This new attraction would take guests inside Garfield's head, bringing them face-to-face -face with its worst nightmares. Gone was the simple charm park fans knew and loved and in its place was a bunch of flat cutouts, a flawed use of 3D glasses, and product placement. Kennywood is well known and loved for having a classic amusement park feel. This made an IP-based ride like Garfield's Nightmare stand out like a hematoma. Despite constant criticism from guests, the ride would stick around for 14 years. For over a decade, park fans practically demanded Kennywood to bring back the nostalgic Old Mill. And finally in 2020, the park would announce the ride's return. In the summer of that year, the new Old Mill would open to the public. The skeletons are back, and Garfield is nowhere to be seen. But don't worry about him, he still made a name for himself as a disturbing internet animation star. Number 5. Haunted Castle Ghost Hunt at England's Ocean Beach Pleasure Park Located at the base of the historic South Shields Pier, Ocean Beach Pleasure Park seems like a typical beachside amusement park. Its attractions are generally well received by the public, and it's widely considered to be a great place for family fun and fish and chips. However, one attraction in particular is bound to leave dark ride enthusiasts scratching their heads. Despite its Haunted Castle theme, riders start by boarding what appear to be flying saucers. Each saucer comes with a steering wheel and a laser gun. The steering wheel spins the vehicle on the track, while the laser gun is meant to shoot at targets throughout the ride. However, as far as I can tell, all of the scoreboards have duct tape over them, rendering said laser guns as completely pointless. As for the ride itself, it can best be described as the back room of a party city. Random props are scattered throughout the show building with no cohesion or organization, and the plastic stone backdrop is literally peeling off the wall. The extremely short indoor section is followed by an extremely short outdoor section, with even more random props scattered around. Additionally, there's what appears to be a fish sticks mascot sitting on a bench with what looks to be a severed limb. The whole thing plays out like Uncle Fred's backyard Halloween party, and one has to wonder how quickly they slap this together. 
On the other hand, this ride also has its fans. YouTube user The Roller Ghoster, who uploaded this footage, said the following. There's something special about these old cheesy dark rides for me. I love them. I traveled four hours just to ride this one. They are just so much fun to have a ride on. It just goes to show that even the most dreadful dark rides on Earth can still have their fans. Number 4. Br'er Rabbit's Burrow at Wales Oakwood Theme Park Though no longer in operation, this dark ride was unintentionally unnerving. Despite the name, it has little to no relation with the works of Joel Chandler Harris. There's no Br'er Fox or Br'er Bear, but there are plenty of dead-eyed rabbits. After boarding a train, passengers are whisked away on a journey to Br'er Rabbit's Happenin' Place to attend the titular rabbit's house party. And what a party it is. Cakes, breakdancing, pillow fighting, and even alcohol. It was quite a sight to see. And if you thought Splash Mountain was missing scenes of Br'er Rabbit getting sh**-faced and taking a dump, then whatever floats your boat, I guess. Riders at the time had a mixed response to this attraction. Some regard it as a classic, while others don't look back on it so fondly. Over the years, the ride had deteriorated quite a bit. The music had stopped playing after a while, and many of the animatronics had stopped moving. Plus, the low ceiling made it feel uncomfortably claustrophobic. Some park guests were quite harsh in their criticism. TripAdvisor user Sarah Whaley described the ride as, quote, a mind-numbingly boring, tired, and unfunny scenic ride with rubbish models of animals preparing and having a party. TripAdvisor user Michelle G described it as, quote, appalling and not suitable for kids at all. And Jason S said, quote, I would say that Br'er Rabbit's Burrow should be bulldozed into oblivion because it's just wrong on all levels. The animatronics are awful, and mainly broken to the point of more scary looking than things in spooky 3D, and the ones that aren't broken just look like glue-sniffing rabbits. Suffice to say, after years of disrepair, the ride was finally closed in 2013 to make room for a Roll Doll themed area, but this ride definitely wasn't forgotten. Years after its closure, the ride gained notoriety online after an abandoned animatronic of a bathing rabbit went viral on TikTok. This image is so cursed in so many ways. And keep in mind, this wasn't taken too long after the ride closed. All I can say is that if you see this image in your nightmares tonight, I apologize. Number 3. Fast and Furious Supercharged at Florida's Universal Studios Orlando Built on the former spot of the aforementioned Earthquake ride, this attraction is based on the blockbuster Fast and Furious film series. When it was first announced, there was plenty of speculation as to what it would be. Would it be a roller coaster, or an advanced 4D show, or would they simply just port the panoramic 3D movie from Universal Hollywood's tram tour? Ultimately, they chose the latter. This ride goes downhill as soon as it starts. After an introduction sequence, the vehicle enters a panoramic screen tunnel, and this is pretty much the entire ride. Sure, the vehicle rocks back and forth, and there's some steam effects, I guess, with some of the most unconvincing CGI since the glob gob glob 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 gob gab glab. I think I pronounced that right. But people expected a lot more than just a ported tram tour experience. This ride is dull, pointless, and completely unimmersive. Unsurprisingly, this attraction proved to be incredibly unpopular with guests. At least Br'er Rabbit was the so bad it's good kind of attraction. But this is just so bad it's worth chucking into the nearest scrapyard. Number 2. Superstar Limo at Disney's California Adventure In the late 90s, former Disney CEO Michael Eisner wanted to build a ride based on Hollywood for the company's newest theme park. Eisner originally envisioned it as a high-speed thrill ride where guests would dodge the paparazzi. However, after Princess Diana died in a limo crash also evading the paparazzi, the proposed attraction had to be significantly changed. Instead of going fast, the ride would move as slow as possible. And instead of escaping the paparazzi, the ride would be focused on a scenic tour through Hollywood. The resulting attraction was insanely cheap and insanely cheesy, with low-quality animatronics of C-list celebrities scattered throughout the ride. The visuals were cheap as well, with flat cutouts making it look like an elementary school play. But this is Disney we're talking about, the king of all dark rides. People expected a lot more from them, and the focus on C-list celebrities made it feel cynical and corporate. The ride was so horribly received by guests that it closed in less than a year. A fitting end for such a cringe-worthy attraction. Number 1. Terminus Made by an unknown manufacturer, formerly known as Mousetrap, this ride won my poll in a landslide. But how could a simple fair ride be worse than the cheesy Superstar Limo or the uninspired Fast and Furious? Is the scenery even worse than Haunted Castle Ghost Hunt? 
Well, to put it bluntly, there is no f***ing scenery. Aside from a light box and some grey hairy thing behind bars, this ride literally takes place in a metal box. Those zombies painted on the ride's facade are incredibly misleading. This ride has about as much to do with zombies as the Heart Attack Grill has as much to do with kale and quinoa salads. What else can I say about this ride except, it's a metal box. A metal box, metal walls, you go around and go turn and yeah, the, all that stuff. I'm not sure how smooth the ride experience is, but as a dark ride, it totally sucks. I'm sorry, it just does. Before we wrap things up, I just want to give a special shout out to my new Patreon supporters. Verbal shout outs start at the gold tier, so if you don't hear your name, it will be listed at the end of the video. Here's a special shout out to Charlie Lichterman, LG456, and AJ Mojo. Thank you all so much, and if you want to support me on Patreon, I've put a link in the description. Thanks for watching everyone, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. You can follow me on social media on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, or you can check out my website at themeparkcrazy.com. This is Theme Park Crazy, and I'll see you all next time. Thank God we made it out of there alive. Experience.